Um, so in this section, we're going to uh, talk about how to do sample data simulation with Gen5. And um, so last, uh, in the end of last section, we raised a question. Is that like, what if our ROI is too large? So uh, we can, um, one of the solution to this problem is that we can do sample data simulation, which um, there are two major types of sampling. One, uh, the first one is targeted sampling, and the second one is st uh, statistical sampling. So what is targeted sampling? So targeted sampling selects the sample based on a specific characteristic that are discovered by the analyst. So this is one uh, brief example of uh, how targeted sampling works. So given uh, there's uh, execution, if there's two distinct program behaviors, the blue block and the yellow block, we can uh, find, uh, find out the, um, this behavior through analysts and only simulate one blue block and one yellow block and multiply by the number of time it appeared in the execution to do uh, target sampling. And for, um, there are two uh, well-known uh, simulations, uh, sorry, there's two well-known target sampling methods uh, which is uh, sim point and loop point. Both uh, methods divide the whole program execution into regions that uh, each execute a fixed number of instruction. So uh, in here, like my explanation would be oversimplifying like all this method. Uh, because if we get into detail, we will find that like uh, loop point might actually define their unit of work is, uh, differently, but like we need some, uh, we will need a really large block of time to explain what is your new work. So, in, uh, so we are just going to explain everything in a user's um, will. So uh, for both uh, sim point and loop point, they use something called a basic block vector to uh, classify the um, characteristic of the program behavior. So a base, here is a really simple example what a basic block vector looks like. So imagine that a program that only have two basic block and we, um, we kind of execute it like in some um, pattern here and our basic block vector would look like um, a vector with five of the basic block one and seven of the basic block two. So it does not record the order, but it records the frequency this basic block has been executed. So um, is there any question on this? Okay. So for statistical sampling, as this name, uh, name suggests, it statistically select the sampling unit. So this is another uh, brief example of how it works. So uh, when we have a program, we can slice it into a really small um, chunk of execution, and we only do detailed simulation in this small chunk of execution throughout the whole execution. And, um, and then we can use the average performance of this large amount of slice to predict the overall average uh, performance of executing the whole program. So the representative uh, simulation sampling method in this category is SMARTS and FSA. Both methods periodically or randomly simulate in detail for a small amount of execution throughout the whole pr ex uh, program execution and fast forward between the detailed simulations. And they use the performance of the randomly distributed samples to predict the overall performance at the whole um, program execution. So note that like, um, no matter how great a tool or a technique is, misusing it can be dangerous. So before using any of the sampling techniques, we need to make sure the sampling techniques work for our experiments. For example, SimPoint is designed to work with single-threaded workload only. So if our experiment requires multi-threaded workload, we should not choose SimPoint as our sampling technique. So uh, in Gen5, we have infrastructure for SimPoint, LoopPoint, Elfi, Smart, and FSA. Might not be um, uh, supported officially for FSA, but for the above, uh, we do. So let's start with targeted sampling in Gen5. 
So uh, Gen5 provide uh, infrastructure for a point and loop point to analyze the program, take checkpoint for the representative regions, and run representative regions. Note that our loop point analyst support is not currently uh, in Gen5 uh, 24 version, but uh, is tested and prepared to be upstreamed in Gen5 24 uh, 01 um, version. And Gen5 also provide the infrastructure for ELFIs to be executed in SE mode. Uh, but Gen5 does not support creating LV files and uh, their information. So uh, let's start with um, an example on uh, doing theme point in Gen5. So as I uh, mentioned before, there are uh, three steps in using theme point. The first one is we need to analyze the program. The second one is we need to take checkpoints for the region that we picked to be uh, detail simulated. And the third one is we need to run those representative regions. So there are two key files that are related in, uh, related, uh, in using SimPoint in Gen5. One uh, is the SimPoint file under the Python Gen5 UTO, which is the standard library uh, uh, interface for using SimPoint. And the other is the um, also SimPoint file, uh, but it's under CPU simple probes which is the SimPoint Pro Point, which is uh, the underneath um, feature for analyzing um, basic block vectors for SimPoint. And we will be seeing them like throughout the section. So uh, as mentioned, uh, we use this SimPoint probe listener object that we probably will cover tomorrow. Um, to collect the information, SimPoint needs to cluster the region. And uh, the simple probe listener has two parameter, uh, yeah, parameters. One is the interval, the other is the profile. So the interval takes in a length as our definition of a region. It means that uh, every time we execute a number of instructions, we see it as the end of the region. And the default value for it is uh, 100 million instructions. So the profile <coughs> file takes a, num a name for the output zip file. So the default name here is the simpoint.bb.gips. Um, in order to use the probe listener object, we need to attach it to an atomic CPU. It will start collecting information as soon as the simulation starts and will stop when the simulation ends. After exiting the simulation, there will be a zip file with the basic block vector information for each region under the simulation output directory. So um, let's try to uh, do simpoint analysis with Gen5. So in here, uh, all the material can be found under um, material 02 using Gen5, 09 sampling, and 01 simpoint. So in this exercise, we will only uh, we will not modify any script, but uh, we will do a detailed look in what the script is doing, and I would um, explain like uh, how to do with uh, the outputs that this script provides. And our goal here is to run the simple analysis with Gen5, then process the data to get the representative regions and their weights we needed. Um, so uh, because the profiling and getting the baseline performance might take a while, so uh, we will first run the simulation w with the following command here. So we, we can run it with uh, one, one with one, um, one terminal and open another for another run. So any issue with running this two command under the simple directory? Or any questions so far? Okay. 
So uh, in this exercise, we're trying to create a point for a simple workload. The uh, workload can be found uh, under the same directory. Uh, there's a workload folder, and the source code is the simple workload. So the simple workload does, um, so it, it does a really um, repetitive uh, computation. So all it does is it has a array with uh, 1,064 bits element, and it will first uh, initialize the array with a, a with a number. Then at the end, uh, it will um, sum up all the number for a thousand times. So we can expect that this piece of code here will be really repetitive for the basic block vector. So um, let's, uh, sorry for switching around. Um, let's uh, look at our um, simple analyst file here. So as you can see, um, we're running the workload that we just saw the source code of. And the important part is that uh, we connected our uh, simple probe object to our atomic CPU using this at simple probe function. Uh, we can find the definition of this function under the um, CPU uh, simple uh, atomic CPU f uh, file. It's defined it there, and it takes in a million instruction as the interval here. And. So after our um, simulate uh, our analysis finished, we should find this um, simpoint bb dot file under the uh, output directory here. So we can uh, unzip the fi this file with the command zip dash d dash k and simpoint dot um, bb dot uh, zip here. And this is the uh, file that contains all the analyst information that um, the simple probe listener collects for our workload. So uh, so each T means that is uh, is a new star for the uh, region's basic block vector. So as you can see here, the, um, the first basic block vector looks really um, different from the rest. So we can assume that in this part, we were doing all the allocation in your side, uh, initialization there. But when we actually get to the 1,000 iteration uh, piece of code, the basic block vector looks really uh, identical uh, code to each other. So we can expect that uh, in the simple method, we will cluster this um, basic block vector together and pick one region out of it to be our representative region. Any questions so far? So I want to also dive a little bit deeper on um, what this uh, what format means. So as we mentioned, T means a new star for the region's uh, basic block vector. So, and in here, this um, on the left side of the co comma, this symbol comma um, is the basic block ID, and on the right side is not the frequency of how many times this basic block has been executed, but it's actually how many numbers of instruction this basic block has been executed through this region. So it means that it's the frequency of this basic block uh, execution multiplied by the basic block's instructions. So if we, uh, if we um, sum up all this, um, uh, sum up all the right side of the comma together, we will get, uh, we will get a number that's really close to the interval that we set up for the simple and pro point. And now we have um, our analyst data. So we will need a way uh, to 
cluster this data and find our uh, representative regions. So in this exercise here, we will be using the Simpoint 3.2 tool that's provided by the Simpoint paper's author. So we can find uh, more information of, uh, about this tool in their actual website. But um, it's, it, it takes some time, oh, here. This, uh, we can find more information about this tool in their website there. So basically we can expect that it would first do a random linear uh, projection to project the uh, basic blood vector to 15 uh, dimension and then cluster it with a k-mean cluster uh, algorithm. So, um, our, uh, so the tool is already compiled and, and can be found under uh, the same directory uh, which is um, this SimPoint binary here. So uh, we can run this uh, tool with um, this bash script that we uh, provide. So in here, um, I want to also explain a little bit about uh, what, the, um, what this option means. So in here, we would uh, put in um, the simpoint.bb file that we just uh, got from our um, Gen5 analyst for simpoint to the tool here. And then in this dash K, we are asking the tool to find us five representative region out of the nine regions that we got from uh, our analysts for the workload. And then we will save all our sim, sim point information in this uh, resource.sim file. And we will save the weight information for each region in this resource.weight file. So uh, let's run this um, really quick. So after it's run, we will see this uh, resource.sim file. It picked the three representative regions for it instead of five because the algorithm f uh, found that like three regions would be enough to represent the, all the behavior that can be found in this workload. And in this uh, resource.weight file, we were able to find the weight we needed for um, uh, the prediction of the overall uh, performance for each region. So. Um, Know that on the right side, this is not the same point um, number because like, it's, um, so on the right side, the index is not continuous because it's not a same point region index, it's the cluster uh, index uh, in the tool. So uh, if we look at this two, um, files, we will find that um, this algorithm found that uh, re uh, region three, region one, and region zero should be our representative region. And for region three, it has a weight of point, uh, zero, uh, point 0.2. And uh, for region one, it have a weight of point 0.6. And for region zero, it has a weight of point 0.1. So, um, now that we find our representative region and uh, their weight, we'll need to find a way to get to those same point. So as mentioned uh, in, in um, sorry, our last section, uh, there are two methods to get to the regions of inches. So with same point, we usually use checkpointing. So to do this, uh, we'll be uh, using the set SE same point workload uh, in this, uh, in the Gen5 standard library, and um, the SimPoint class that we mentioned, uh, this uh, standard library interface for running SimPoint, and the SimPoint safe uh, checkpoint generator that's also provided uh, in the standard library. So uh, we can find it in the source uh, Python Gen5 um, components uh, board. SE binary for the um, set SE point workload here. And the other is also under the Python directory. So let's, let's try to um, take a checkpoint 
for the representative region that uh, we just found. So any questions so far, by the way? Yes. So, um, so, yeah, let's start to take a checkpoint for um, the representative region that we just found. So uh, we can take it with uh, running this line here. So uh, while it's running, let's uh, look at what this uh, simple checkpoint script is actually doing. So as uh, mentioned before, it will be using um, the simple module from the standard library, and it will be using the um, simple safe checkpoint generator, also from the standard library, and it will be using the set as a uh, simple workload for uh, from the board to set up the um, um, simple uh, work uh, ticking checkpoint for simple workload. So uh, first here we'll be uh, using the simple um, then the library module to take in all the simple needed information. So it includes the interval that uh, we set when we profile the workload, which is uh, one million instruction here, and it takes in the um, sim points uh, information, uh, the sim point that's selected uh, from the sim point file, and uh, there's for so for the uh, simple module, we also have a parameter that we can set it up, set up the all the um, representative region index uh, with like with a list. But uh, in here, we can also pipe in with the actual file. So also the same for the weights. We can uh, pipe in the weights um, using the weights file path, and here. Um, for the warm-up interval, I think this is the only parameter that's not familiar with us. So uh, as mentioned in our last section briefly, we should expect most of the micro uh, architectural states to be code when uh, restoring a checkpoint. Therefore, we need to reserve uh, a warm-up period for our regions of interest to warm up the micro architectural states of the system. So as such, uh, we need to set up the warm-up interval here. Uh, so we, when we restore a checkpoint, we can expect to have a length of simulation to warm up the microarchitectural state. So in here, we set it up as our uh, interval um, number. So it would, uh, it would be expected to use the last region as our warm-up interval. So uh, the simple class can also detect how much space that we have for the warm-up period. So if there is not enough space, it will automatically shrink a warm-up period of that simple point to the space that's available. For example, if we have a simple point that starts at the beginning of the program, then the warm-up period for it should be zero instructions. So the simple class also automatically sort our simple based on uh, when they start in terms of instruction. So it also uh, provides uh, gather functions that, uh, it also provides a lot of uh, gather functions that might be helpful, such as the get uh, weight list function that we can get the weight for the simple point that we are running. So uh, we can find more information about this um, simple class in, uh, under the um, simple module file in the standard library. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry for jumping around. Um, so, uh, yeah. oh, so, sorry. Um, so let's uh, look at a little bit uh, on how this uh, simple safe checkpoint generator works. So it would take in a directory for, uh, for us to know where to store this simple checkpoint. Then it would um, take in the simple information that we just created using the uh, simple standard library module. And uh, lastly, uh, if we look at the set as e simple workload, it just took in the binary for the workload that we just did the analyst on, and it would need the simple information to pipe in there, but that's it. That's all we need to uh, do in order to take um, 
sim points, checkpoints in Gen5 using the standard library interface. So now that uh, so now that we can see the uh, checkpointing simulation finish, uh, we can find all the checkpoint under the file um, simpoint checkpoint. And they will be labeling uh, as like cpt dot um, simpoint with the index for the simpoint. As you can see, the index here is different from the cluster ID the file will provide. So uh, we can expect it to be continuous. So now we get all the same points. It's time for us to actually run them and do the actual uh, prediction. So um, same point relies on the weight we got from the analyst stage to do the prediction. And the weight is calculated by the number of region in the cluster divided by the total number of region in the workload. So for example, if we, uh, calculate a if we want to calculate the predicted IPC, we can sum up all the uh, most, uh, all the result of the weights of the cluster times the IPC of the cluster. By cluster, I mean um, the representative region that we just took a checkpoint with. It's also named some point. But. So uh, let's run all the um, Simpoint checkpoint that we just did. So we also provided a bash script to uh, do this like uh, more easily. Um, so let's uh, first like um, run this bash script here. So as you can see, we need uh, like a separate simulation to restore each checkpoint. So, we, so therefore, if we have um, three sim points, we need to run three simulation here. And currently, it's running. So, uh, so while it's running, let's look at uh, what we are uh, restoring. Uh, what the restoring uh, script looks like. So um, in the beginning, uh, we, uh, we ran the uh, simulation for the full detail run uh, script here. So for the full detail run, it runs our workload in a relatively detailed, uh, in a relatively complicated um, system. And uh, if we look at the uh, simpoint run file, it, w it has a matching system so that we can use the resource of this simple run to try to predict the uh, IPC that should be close to the full detail run there. Any question here? Okay. So now that we see uh, all three our simple are finished running, we can now uh, take the uh, IPC uh, number from them and we also provided uh, Python script to do this. So in this Python script here, it, it looks messy, but um, what it does is uh, just it takes in the IPC from the three uh, simple runs and compare it with the IPC uh, of the full detail run. So we can run it with Python three predict uh, overall IPC. Py. And here we will find that the predicted IPC is 1.257, with the actual baseline IPC is 1.24. So there is a relative error of 0.8%. Uh, so it's really close because um, our workload is really repeated. So uh, as mentioned before, the way that this Python file to do the prediction, it just summing up all the SimPoints IPC with the SimPoints weight. So um, summary on SimPoint. So congratulations, we walked through the whole process of sampling with SimPoint method. So let's recap what we did. We first did an analyst with Gen5. Then we checkpoint all the representative region that we found. Then uh, at the end, we run each region and used uh, the use the formula to predict the performance. And there's a good news. This process is really similar for majority of the method in target sampling. Therefore, if we know how to do this sam uh, sampling with simple method, it should not be hard for us to use other methods such as loop point, which enables multi-thread workload sampling. So, Let's move on to uh, loop point and alphys. We are not going to do like a detailed example here, but um, I but is so for uh, loop point is a method that's kind of similar to simpoint, 
um, but with a little, uh, with a few um, key differences. So loop point uses the number of times a loop is executed to mark the region instead of using instruction executed. So we uh, need to collect the loop execution information in the analyst stage in addition to the basic block execution information that we collected for SimPoint. So other than this, it's really similar to SimPoint in terms of the process, the three-step process that we just did. So ALFI is a checkpointing method that creates checkpoint executable out of large workload execution. So, um, so it can be used with a loop point to create executable of uh, the representative region. Like SimPoint, it uses the number of times a loop has been executed to mark the beginning and the end of the region of inches. So we need the information to execute, Al uh, we need this information to execute ALFI in Gen 5. So uh, we can find more information about Loopoint and Alfie in their website, and I provide a link there. So um, it's important to know that Gen5 does not produce uh, Alfie files, but we have support to run the Alfie files in SE mode. So all the weight and loop information should come with the Alfie workload. So we can uh, run Alfies uh, with the Alfie info class um, which is another module in the standard library. And uh, we also provide the example um, in the material directory to run it, but it would take quite some time. It would take around um, 15 minutes to finish this example, so we're not gonna do it here. Uh, so, but it's note that it's an A-threaded uh, experiment with a detailed uh, system that might run 800 million instructions. So, So in summary, um, after we run uh, Loopoint or Alfie, we need to went through the same process in, uh, like we did for SimPoint to predict the overall performance. And for more information, um, we might need to look into their paper. So now that we covered the targeted sampling method that is supported in Gen5, let's dive into statistical method. Sampling. Yeah, so uh, for statistical sampling in Gen5, uh, as we mentioned, we have instrument structure for SMART and uh, unofficially for FSA. So uh, SMART is one of the statistical sampling uh, method that it uses the uh, statistic model to predict the overall performance with randomly or uh, periodically selected uh, samples. So before we actually use the method, we need to define, uh, we will need to decide on the statistical uh, parameter um, that is uh, required for the model, which um, for some of them is the uh, number of sample that uh, we are expecting, and the systematic uh, sampling interval that um, we, uh, we, we want, to, we'll go in more detail about them later, but so, um, and the uh, sampling unit size and also the length of the detailed warm-up period. So um, as you can see, we also have an example on uh, running SMART under the uh, material directory, but uh, because of time constraint, we are not gonna do this, but I'm going to walk through you uh, like what is actually uh, doing. So uh, let's recap on the statistical um, parameter that we were talking about um, be, um, like two slides before. So in, um, so we, uh, so sorry, the number of samples is uh, the number of detailed simulation um, slides that we expect for the whole workload. So uh, let's, um, oh. so uh, it's represented by the gray block here and the systematic uh, sampling interval it's also a number of count. It's, so in one sampled uh, interval, it has the number of sampled unit size, which is instruction times the k, the systematic sampling interval. So that our um, detailed uh, simulated slide for one sampled interval is a k minus one times u. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's actually the u. But the actual, the fast forward size would be the u times the k minus the w. It's really confusing. Please let me know if you have it. Oh, uh, so uh, so the gray uh, color block represents the sampling unit size. So it's an instruction 
of execution there. And the, uh, the light blue color is the warned up interval, also in the instruction, that uh, we use uh, in between fast forwarding to warn up our microarchitecture before actually measuring the detailed uh, simulation uh, unit. Um, then the dark blue is where we do all the fast forwarding. So uh, we, we don't record any, uh, any statistic there, which is fast forward to the next point. So any questions? So uh, in the example script, we provide like a smart uh, generator uh, function to uh, actually take in this parameter and uh, react as uh, our um, as like what the smart method should be. So in order to deter, so let's talk more about the statistic uh, parameters. So in order to determine the K, which is the systematic uh, sampling uh, interval, and also the uh, warmed up interval, we first need to determine what is our ideal sampling si uh, size for uh, this workload. So in the smart paper, they defined a large uh, sample size as a size that's uh, larger than 30. So for this example here, we will set our ideal um, sample size as 50, and after setting up uh, the ideal size, we can use this, uh, and also the program dynamic uh, execution length to uh, find out the rest of the parameters that we need to perform smarts. So in here, uh, our program has a length of like nine million instruction. So uh, if we do the calculation, we will get um, like a, a, fa a f gap that's um, including warm up and fast forward to be 182,000 instruction, like some, such, some calculation. So uh, for our uh, smart exit generator, so it would use the parameter that we just decided and uh, do the fast uh, simulation in the uh, dark blue period and do the detailed uh, simulation for warning up for the light blue period and at the end uh, do the detailed simulation and measurement in the gray block period. Any questions? So um, if you are interested, uh, you can uh, go run this uh, smart uh, script. And at the end, we would uh, we will also provide it, uh, like a prediction script to uh, predict the um, performance uh, of in terms of uh, prediction for the smart method. And I think we can run it really fast here. Um, oh, this is him. Sorry, I'm in the wrong folder. So we can see that with uh, 50 samples simulated with the smart generator inside a smart uh, uh, Python script, uh, with the smart um, simulation script, uh, the predicted IPC is 1.256. So the actual, since the uh, actual IPC is 1.24, we will have a relative prediction error of 0.6% for a smart method. So, um, so there's different trade-off for uh, different sampling methodology. Uh, so for example, targeted sampling, it might have a larger speed up, but it will require more um, storage. And, um, and uh, so, oh, sorry. So and we, uh, it's possible for us to do a direct comparison between regions for the targeted sampling, which is not possible for statistical sampling. And also like um, there are some resource, like uh, different trade off that like, if you're interested, like we can talk a lot offline on this. Someone wants to answer the question. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna end with the question that uh, when we run the sim points, uh, uh, Running the simple representative regions, like we need to run like a separate like simulation uh, with different uh, script inputs for each sim points. But what if we could do it like in one simulation? And that's my end.